Well, hello there, you're watching the press preview. A first look at what is on the front pages. In the next half hour, we will see what's making the headlines with the columnist and broadcaster Steve Richards and the former government special advisor Salma Shah. Great to see both of you. Um, front pages, though, before we chat. Uh, the Metro then declaring Threesy Does It in response to the lowering of the COVID alert level and the forthcoming relaxation of restrictions. The Telegraph quotes the Prime Minister insisting it's up to all of us to exercise common sense. Here's the ICE headline, six days, it says, until you can hug your family. Daily Mail now, the end is now in sight. While the Sun's priorities appear to be focused on staying in, as they exclaim. Oh dear, yes, 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 you can read that yourself. Uh, Yorkshire Post gives most of its front page to the easing of restrictions as well. Ahead of the Queen's speech tomorrow, the Mirror leads on one family's plea to the Prime Minister to fix adult social care, which Boris Johnson pledged to do back in 2019. Labour has patronised its heartland voters for too long. That's according to the party's deputy leader, Angela Rayner, who has spoken exclusively to The Guardian. Financial Times leading with the price of iron ore hitting an all-time high. So let's talk more then. Steve Richards, Salma Shah are here. Welcome. Uh, Salma, let's kick off with the Daily Mail, shall we? Um, the Prime Minister, the end is now in sight. This is, in, in a sense, for the scientists, the scary bit, isn't it? Well, yes, because the whole idea of this unlocking has been based on doing things um, steadily within uh, data, not dates, is the Prime Minister's favourite saying. Um, and so we're going to see, you know, what this next stage is going to bring in terms of, um, you know, any spikes in cases. But I think across uh, all the coverage, what we're going to see is a lot of relief and a lot of um, sort of upbeat tone uh, because we're all feeling it clearly. Um, and it does feel like, you know, it's going to come to an end soon, notwithstanding the fact that there still could be issues, particularly around travel over the summer. How do you think people will feel about this, this idea that the one metre plus rule could be axed, which is something the Daily Mail's picked up on, um, no masks in schools, which maybe gave some reassurance to some parents. You know, the fact that some people have to ease themselves out of this, which has been months and months now, hasn't it, Steve? Yeah, I think that's an interesting point. I think some people will struggle with the easing of restrictions in the same way that many have struggled with the continuing reimposition of constraints over the last year, because we are so used to this new dynamic. But um, we've all been doing this newspaper review at really dark moments, you know, when the lockdown, another lockdown was being imposed, when it was quite clear that Boris Johnson was being wholly prematurely optimistic. But this feels as if there is real cause for optimism. I mean, virtually every front page has optimistic headlines about emerging more fully out of a lockdown in May and then again in June. And we've got the evidence for it. The vaccines seem to be working with the qualification about variants. And no one knows for sure the impact of opening up on this scale. But there is a really positive mood that perhaps, perhaps uh, we are moving towards the end of lockdowns. Yes, qualification about variants, but also modelling, which has been repeated by SAGE and its subcommittees tonight, uh, about the possibility of an increase in cases, which can very quickly go exponential. We've seen it ourselves with the Kent variant. We're seeing it in India now. Um, you know, sort of beginning to have warnings about August and September. You know, I don't know what the government does now to keep a lid on it, having said this is going to be the last lockdown, whether there'll be any appetite, Salma, to ever go back into any other form of restrictions. Um, it leaves them in, a, in, in something of a quandary, doesn't it? Well, it does, except for the fact that they have international uh, examples where they could actually uh, look to. So New Zealand, for example, sort of thought about its domestic opening over and above its international opening. And I think um, as far as a lot of businesses are concerned, service businesses, they can still operate, um, uh, you know, whilst being open, but obviously hospitality can't. So it's about sort of dealing with that before you start looking at other sectors like uh, travel and tourism that are going to be hit. So I think the government's sort of assessment is going to have to look at what they can keep open, um, even if you get some kind of like exponential growth, um, which means that you can control it. 
So, one of the big issues that many people have talked about today makes the front page of the eye, six days until you can hug your family. That word, hug, sort of symbolises the strange position we've been in where the government can tell us what to do about something that basic, something so human. Um, it, it's a very strange thing that somebody can now tell me in six days I'm allowed to do something like that, Steve. Yeah, and it's kind of up to us, you know, who you decide to hug or not, as the case may be. You know, in France, I've always wondered how they choose. You know, you can use vu, which is very kind of formal, and tu, when you are being a bit intimate with people. And I always wondered how they chose. Well, now we're going to have to decide ourselves who to hug. And it could involve all kinds of embarrassing <laughs> moments. You know, I can imagine moving towards embracing someone and being horrified if they move away. You know what I mean? <laughs> We're all going to experience these things. But it's over to us now. Um, we've been told not to do this. Um, my guess is there will be a lot of hugging, to be honest. You know, people would just do it indiscriminately for a bit. Um, but uh, Johnson says, still be cautious. And I think he's right. And I'm pleased you mentioned that the scientists are still really looking at this carefully, looking at the consequences. Um, but as I said at the beginning, there does seem to be, because of the vaccines, more substance for this current wave of hugging optimism. Yes. Uh, Daily Telegraph picks up on that idea of um, common sense. It's, it's not the first time Boris Johnson has used that, that phrase. There has been a suggestion that everybody's doing something which is one step ahead of where the government allows us to, that people are probably already meeting indoors, even if they've got their back door open. Do you think that's fair or do you think people have still been really well behaved, Salma? So, I mean, based on the figures and given the fact that the um, virus is obviously decreasing quite significantly here, you would expect there to be a high level of compliance. And I think anybody who's making these kinds of decisions would accept that, that some people are going to bend the rules a little bit. Um, but I think that the idea of common sense, given that people have all become real experts in, in COVID and COVID practices, means that people are going to take that risk assessment themselves. And the government really can't do that for everybody. Um, on a personal level, before I hug anyone, I'm going to make sure that I see their vaccine certification um, before <laughs> I make contact. So I'm not going to be as fast <laughs> loose as Steve. <laughs> Yes, well, we do, I won't ask you the question which, which was put to the Prime Minister, who you're going to hug or hug first. We'll just leave that there. You don't, you know, you don't want to make people too unhappy, do you? Um, but the, there is such a range of things that people can do, and it is the indoor bit which the scientists are concerned about. But really, economically, this is absolutely vital, isn't it, for the hospitality sector and others, Steve? Yeah, I mean, it is still strange going into central London and seeing everything... Closed. I mean, obviously, some people sitting outside, but a lot of those restaurants can't have that kind of outside space and so are lying empty, dark. And it is urgent for them to reopen and allow people inside. And, and I think that, if assuming it happens and it goes smoothly, I mean, we had a disaster last summer with all that eat out to help out stuff. But assuming this time with the vaccine, it's safe. Yeah, it's going to be a massive boost to that sector which has been so badly hit by what's happened over the last year yes. and it'll be a good boost for everybody i think everyone wants to get out and do things or most you know i think as we were talking earlier there'll be wariness in some places um so it, it it's a double winner assuming it works this time Yes, the list, um, helpfully, on the on the front page of The Telegraph, cinemas, I mean, who's been to one of those for as long as we can remember? Theatres, museums, yeah. concert halls, business conference centres, not to mention hotels, B&Bs, uh, that's what you're talking about, getting out, isn't it, doing new things, which takes us, in some respects, Salma, dare I, to the, the sun, which is this strange situation that if you've been... Well, if you've been going out with somebody, you've not been able to stay overnight. Um, yet another thing, like the hug that you're being told by central government that you can and can't do. Well, I think if you have been going out with someone that I think very early on, there was a, a, some advice from the deputy um, chief medical officer that was like, you know, maybe this is the time to think about the solidity of your relationship and maybe create a bubble together. I think the Sun's um, front page is really interesting because it's a lot more about those sort of... Um, 
random meetings that you have and those random interactions. And uh, it seems, as the sun is quite eloquently laid out, I think, uh, that uh, the next ra range of um, openings is going to be about having that first date and obviously ending in some success by the end of it. <sighs> I don't really want to go there, personally. I know it's late and all that, but... Uh, um... The things that Abby needs about hugging seems so innocent compared with those dialects. <laughs> yeah, let's just, let's just stop at the hug, Come shall we? <laughs> um, and just one final thought, this idea of, with the vaccination programme, um, I see it's been reported that uh, the FDA is approving the Pfizer vaccine for 12 to 15-year-olds in America. This idea that we're still going to vaccinate younger and younger people as we go down the, the cohorts. But, it, but is there a sense that the vaccine will win the day and, and this is kind of over or the worst of it's over, Steve? Should we feel optimistic, do you think? Well, yeah, I mean, there's cause for optimism. As it's been the theme of this uh, paper review. With that qualification of variants of unpredict with unpredictable consequences, and even at the press conference today, the scientists, you know, the number 10 press conference, the scientists were expressing quite a lot of caution about some one of the latest variants that has emerged. So that is a really big qualification. But, you know, as we've been saying all the way through, with the vaccines, there is evidence that it's really... I think, were there no deaths recorded today? I mean, there's, there, it, it seems to be working for now. Just in England, that was actually, um, that was the okay. case. Yeah, yeah that sure. was England, not the sure. UK overall. But yes, I mean, you know, extraordinary, sure. given where we've come from and given what is still happening in, in nations like uh, India and elsewhere. So, you know, we watch with caution around the world, don't we? Um, but fingers crossed, certainly a positive set of newspapers, certainly if you're, uh, you're in Downing Street. Well, welcome back. You're watching the press preview with me now, Steve Richards and Salma Shah. We've reflected on the uh, the COVID opening up, but uh, tomorrow's Queen's speech will be under COVID pandemic restrictions, Steve, won't it? First time also we see the Queen in such a, a big role since the death of, of her husband as well. So it's going to be a, a, a strange old day in some respects. It will be strange, but I still think it will be quite significant politically. Um, mm. Very easy for Boris Johnson. He's had the high of the Hartlepool by-election and other gains. But quite a big test for Keir Starmer. Uh, he'll be speaking in the Queen's speech debate as well and has come under severe criticism, not just from one section of his party, but quite a few across the whole spectrum have been highly critical. So this is his first public test since that whole shadow cabinet. Uh, furore over the weekend. Um, so it'd be significant in that, but as the Metro indicates in other papers, there will be propositions with quite a lot of consequences in the legislative probe. So just very quickly, what would, you, what would you like us to watch out for then? Well, for example, Selma and I were talking about it in the, in the break, uh, the end of that Fixed Term Parliament Act, introduced by Cameron and the Coalition for certain, I think, self-interested reasons, and for similarly self-interested reasons, uh, Boris Johnson wants the flexibility to call an election without any of those constraints. But there are many other interesting bills, uh, some of which will be difficult to implement and deliver. Yes, it's always such a big day, isn't it? Um, Angela Rayner has been speaking in The Guardian, Salma. Labour has talked down to voters for too long, while the FT is uh, talking about Boris Johnson's holiday to Mustique, um, despite the fact that many have suggested that the voters indicated they weren't that bothered about wallpaper costs or otherwise. Yeah, I think the interesting thing about the Johnson holiday, actually, there's, there's two interesting things about it. One is that just because people don't care, it doesn't mean that it doesn't matter. And I think it's important that you have the Standards Commissioner looking at something like this, uh, because it is about sort of who has access to the Prime Minister and who is providing uh, the Prime Minister with, um, you, you know, grace and favour kind of holidays. So that is important and it's, and it's right that it should be investigated properly. I think um, on the other side of it is that... Um, it, we have to wait and see sort of what the consequences of this are actually going to be because number 10 have actually been quite robust about the line in defending the transparency around this um, holiday. So um, hopefully, I mean, from my perspective, it is something that is some, it's something akin to a, an administrative oversight, uh, but we'll wait to see what happens there. With um, Angela Rayner, I think it's very interesting 
given the fact that she's been reshuffled out of, uh, you know, a significant job of campaigning, that she is still talking about work, the working class in this way. And I think that Labour, to a certain extent, has slightly fetishised the working classes. Some people call it patronising. And I think part of this message still really sticks to that idea that um, most people find, you know, not, doesn't really suit them or their identity. So whilst other people are thinking about themselves as aspirational, I think the Labour Party have a real problem in categorising this group of people that they've now lost. Yeah, that's interesting, isn't it? And just in the last 20 seconds, Steve, um, goodbye Fixed Term Parliament Act, less time possibly for Labour to get its act together. Possibly. Um, yeah, I, certainly in 2023, if he's way ahead in the polls, Johnson, he will be very tempted to find an excuse to call an election. It's still more likely when this fixed term parliament act wasn't in place and prime ministers had a choice, they still tended to go four or five years rather than three. Those who went early tended to lose. So it's not a guarantee. Um, but yeah, it, it, it becomes a bigger possibility in the light of this change. Yeah. What with talk of Indy Ref 2 and an early election, we can't cope, can we? I think we've had so many. Um, be Selma. Too much. <laughs> keep yes, Selma, Steve, we'll see you at half 11. Thank you.